Who's on the Lord's side? Who? Stuart Yardall Sequence Part 4 Thoughts on Things and Stuff dot com In Parts 1 through 3 of this series, we were introduced to Stuart Udall, a Jack Mormon who made a conscience-driven separation from the Church in his early adult life. Despite his departure from the Saints, Udall lived a life of moral courage in a time of racism and segregation, culminating in a public letter to the editor in the Mormon journal Dialogue in 1967. He wrote the letter while sitting in office as Secretary of the Interior, the highest-ranking and most visible Mormon in political office at the time. His letter was an appeal for full fellowship of black men and women in the church and a call to abandon false teachings about a divine curse which had served to justify religious segregation within Mormonism itself. It is helpful to review the main points of Udall's letter. Society is awakening to the concepts of racial equality and universal brotherhood. As a result, the LDS Church teachings and policies on black people will come under criticism. Church teachings and policy about blacks is wrong and must be changed. Church teachings and policy hurt the black members and degrade the white members. Early Mormons held non-racist views which were changed for expediency. As the policy of polygamy was changed, so too can the teachings and policy on race. The giving of the priesthood to black members had been prophesied. Surely that day has come. While Udall received several letters congratulating him on his courageous stand, many more letters were received from members who disagreed with his position. Remember that in writing a public, open letter, Udall was airing Mormonism's dirty laundry for all the world to see. He essentially called every prophet from Brigham Young onward a false teacher in regards to race. He contradicted the most widely held interpretations of scripture about a divine curse and skin color. As a member outside of church leadership, he committed the sin of attempting to tell church authorities where they were wrong and what they should be doing. All of these things are strictly taboo in Mormon church culture even today. What do you suppose the other rank-and-file members, seeing a public figure call out their beloved prophet and doctrine in such a way, would say to Udall if they had a chance? The Responses Well, it is possible to find out. After Stuart Udall's very public career and a life in government and environmental activism, he donated his papers to the University of Arizona. In his collection, he kept a file of all the responses he received from members after publishing his letter. Those letters serve as a sort of time capsule of Mormon attitudes and thought about race, deference to authority, and interpersonal relations between Orthodox and unorthodox members of the Church. In each instance, the Mormon who wrote to castigate Udall was empowered to feel completely justified because they were defending the position which the very prophet and apostles of Christ had told them was right for their entire lives. Rather than look at the several letters individually, let's examine the themes that showed up in letter after letter which began to paint a picture of how Mormons had been culturally trained to deal with those who dissent. I present extracted comments for that Udall received sorted by theme. Attacking the Messenger By insulting Udall, readers may have felt that they could negate any of the issues or points that he made. This is a common ad hominem argument which diverts attention from the issue at hand. I think your letter to the magazine trying to tell the LDS church what to do about the Negro is asinine, out of gear, and certainly you must be out of your mind. Are you running out of problems to solve? Who made you so omnipotent that you feel you can solve a problem Abel could not solve, nor apparently Adam, nor Lincoln, nor Eisenhower, nor Truman, nor that violence maker Martin Luther King? Negative letter 8. Throughout the history of the church, it has followed a consistent pattern that all informed, unworthy, disloyal, and apostate members are quick to try to outline the affairs of the church and set it in order. The more a member of the church breaks the laws of God and disregards the statutes of the church, the more he will tell others how to live them. Negative letter 12. You absolute nut! Why don't you shout down Negro bias? The Carmichael and the Kings and the Muslim, why don't you hit where the enemy lies? Negative letter 14. You like to shoot off your mouth about the church with your errors. You are an ignorant man, lacking in knowledge and understanding of the gods. 
You can get a bill passed in U.S. making polygamy legal again. Adults involved consenting is legal. Negative letter 20. It is strange that a man with as much knowledge would use such little wisdom in expressing himself. We are living in a day when those in high political offices should be working for peace and goodwill among all people instead of stirring up unrest. Negative letter 26. Sir, you are a disgrace to all humanity. Negative letter 38. Appeal to Majority. Some readers took comfort in the fact that they saw many of their fellow Mormons react with the same revulsion that they did when reading Udall's letter. Since Mormons excel at following the teachings of the brethren at the head of the church, then it is no surprise that they would find themselves in the majority of members who heeded the call to follow the prophet when it came to issues of race. It was Udall and any liberal, progressive, intellectual Mormons who supported him who were in the minority and went against the teachings of the church. An appeal to the majority, or argumentum ad populum, is another fallacious argument which diverts attention away from the issues at hand. I thought it fitting that you know how many of members of the LDS Church, and perhaps all, feel about a ridiculous and stupid statement on your part. Negative letter 12. Is it colossal ignorance or political viciousness? I recently shared the extremely disgusting experience of reading a feature article on the front page of Nevada's largest newspaper entitled, End LDS Bias, You Doll. I say shared because, without exception, every member of the church of high and low position with whom I have discussed your demand has looked upon it with utter disdain and incredulity. Negative letter 14. I, as thousands of other people, have been extremely upset at a recent news article published under an Associated Press dateline. My feelings are such that I feel a desire to communicate them to you. It is difficult for me to understand why an individual with your religious background, education, and political stature would make such an offhand comment concerning the Mormon religion and their revealed doctrines concerning the Negroes. Negative Letter 24 after reading that article in the Arizona Republic quoting you, your ideas as to the stand the church leader should take towards the Negroes has provoked me to the point I can't refrain from writing you. Every LDS feels as I do, and also many others that are not LDS. What was your motive? Did you feel that it would raise your prestige, or make you appear broader-minded and to have risen above social customs as you intimated the church leaders were bonded to? Negative Letter 26 I wish to inform you that many people, including myself, think that you are absolutely wrong in your ideas and behavior. Negative Letter 41 Jack Mormons Don't Count By pointing out Udall's status as a less-than-Orthodox member, some readers were able to invalidate any of the points that Udall made. This is a special type of ad hominem argument known as poisoning the well, in which the person making the argument is discredited as an individual, serving to negate the import of any arguments that are made. This fallacious rhetorical advice also serves to detract from directly confronting the issues that you'd all raised. Why are you trying to get the priesthood for other people when you value it so lightly? Negative letter one. Prior to examining the substance of your position, I would like to examine you as an individual. To ascertain why you deem yourself a fit spokesman for the church, I certainly will not nor cannot judge. Mr. Secretary, but I have been told by several sources, including high-level Washington sources when I attended law school there, that you do not in any substantial measure adhere to the standards of the church. Is that true? Do you possess a temple recommend, Mr. Secretary? Are you living a life worthy of obtaining one? Do you live the word of wisdom, pay a full tithing, etc.? If you answer the aforementioned questions in the negative, then it is obvious why you would brazenly demand that the church forsake the words of the Lord and fall in line with the other churches. The church simply has no place of real meaning in your life. Negative letter 14. The statement in which you startled most of us Utahns with the demand on our church leaders that they should change their pious ways and allow the Negro the priesthood, 
I don't suppose you have ever held the priesthood, or you wouldn't have said what you did. This really surprises me coming from a member of the LDS Church. I heard rumor that you were a member on paper. This explains a great deal. By the way, did you make the statement as a member of the LDS Church or as an apostate? Just curious. I suggest that you do a little more reading of the standard works of the Church and less talking. Negative letter 16. But perhaps you have never humbled yourself enough to get a testimony and you cannot turn traitor to a god you have never known. Unless you cease your arrogance, you will grow more bitter. The church may not disfellowship you or even pay any attention to your sniping. Negative letter 19. It seems to me that you have one foot in the church, one foot in your governmental job, and an extra foot in your mouth. How can you possibly accept Joseph Smith as a prophet of God, the Book of Mormon and other canonized books as divinely inspired, and then defy the living prophet? The only answer I can find is that you do not believe in the restoration of the gospel, and therefore it is quite easy to defy the prophet and recommend changes in doctrine. For if you believed in the restored church, you would be obeying the commandments and following the teachings of God's chosen leaders in these last days. Your recommends for doctrinal changes within the church are then as valid as my doctrinal recommends would be to the Catholic leaders. I, as you, am not qualified to demand changes. Negative letter 22. If the priesthood is so important to you, Mr. Udall, why are you not honoring it? Is your life so full of party politics, the great society, that you have moved away from the belief structure of your parents? Is it now that you're so concerned with your job that you want to focus national attention on something that you think would be damaging to God-fearing people? Negative letter 24. As I understand it, you are not a good Mormon anymore. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but anyone that would make such a statement surely can't have the belief and faith that he should have if he is a true member. Negative letter 29. To quote you, there is a sad irony indeed, and that sad irony is that you have accrued so many benefits from your being a Mormon without giving anything of yourself to the church. For example, when benefits for Mormons are to be derived, you are first in line, but you've effectively shielded yourself from any responsibility for demonstrating your faith by blatantly disclaiming doctrines held sacred by worthy Mormons as merely borrowed superstitions. Your parasitic relationship with the church disqualifies you from being its spokesman. Regarding the Negro position, we look to a chosen prophet for revelation and not to a government official who has given the church little support for over a quarter of a century and then sanctimoniously declares, surely that day has come. Negative letter 33. On the fact that you were a lifetime member and of the pioneer heritage of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, this I find hard to believe. After a disgraceful comment such as this, unless, sir, you are a member by means of being born under the covenant and not an active priesthood holder. Negative letter 38. Would appreciate knowing what priesthood you hold, what offices you have held in the Church. Would also like to know what ward you reside in and in what state. It was my understanding that you were inactive for a number of years, and it would be interesting to know when you again became active and in a position to speak for the Mormon Church. Negative letter 45. Political motive. Since Udall was a Democrat, some readers felt that his motivation was to raise an issue which would embarrass George Romney, who was a Mormon Republican thought to have the best chance at winning the presidency in the upcoming election. Others thought that his letter was an attempt to mix politics and religion. In either event, an assumed ulterior political motive allowed these readers to discount Udall's arguments. Do you want the Democrats here to lose? We don't. Negative letter 1. If you suppose that the priesthood is a political item that can be given or taken away by the whims of political pressure, then you yourself are not worthy to hold this responsibility before the throne of heaven and men. Negative letter 4. If you had more faith, you might understand that the criteria for revelation are not man's needs, but rather God's will. 
Our church is not a democracy, nor has it ever pretended to be one, but rather it is a theocracy based on the authority given to the prophet Joseph Smith via a visitation from God himself. Educational, political, economic, social, and other organizations can well be changed via your dissenting comments, but the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is not to be an instrument in the hands of would-be reformers. The principles espoused by the Church are eternal in nature, and God's own final judgment will decide the propriety of His laws and ordinances. Negative Letter 7 the root of all present racial trouble is interference in the internal affairs of the southern states by people not at all interested in the settlement of any problems arising between the Negro and the white Americans. This interference comes from organizations and individuals in the North seeking to use the Negro. Among them are found communists, fuzzy-headed liberals, eggheads, pacifists, idealists, do-gooders, conniving politicians, self-seekers, and civil disobedience kits. They employ situations which inflame and agitate the white populace and use it as white propaganda. The civil rights bill is 90% communist and 10% civil rights. Negative letter 13. If you and the rest of the great society would encourage the Negro to work and live for the respect and equality they desire, as your pioneer forebears had to do, rather than incite and encourage them to riot and civil disobedience, we would all see an accelerated arrival of a brotherhood of all men. Sincerely, but not respectfully, yours. P.S. If your ill-advised pronouncement was an effort to deter Governor Romney's potential progress, I can offer you nothing but pity. Negative letter 14. I don't know what you thought you had to gain by challenging the authorities and the prophets of the church, but it must have been political. You may have gained a few votes in Harlem, but you lost a lot of them in Utah. When a man puts politics before his church, he's asking for trouble. Negative letter 15. It is apparent that you're attempting to use the church as a political tool against Governor George Romney in the forthcoming general elections. Whatever you think of Governor Romney as a presidential candidate is, of course, your privilege. But in using your own interpretation of the teachings of the church to bias the mind of the public, you have gone too far. Negative letter 17. Your obvious attempt to include the church in your partisan liberal ideas irritates me to a high degree. The political government is not the savior of the people. Many governments and forms of government have set themselves up as the supreme authority. In time, they all decay because of their own corruption. I suggest that you should confine your activities to the Department of Interior and quit trying to command the Lord or his prophets for your own political reasons. Negative Letter 23 It is well known in both church and political circles that your appointment as Secretary of the Interior came by virtue of your supposed identification with the Mormon ethnic and certainly not from your marginal personal qualifications. In these tactics, however, you have been most opportunistic. We can only hope that your strange and uncalled for proclamations will be recognized by thinking people as an extremely unethical attempt to embarrass Governor George Romney of Michigan. May we suggest that you review his civil rights record? It far outshines your own. Negative letter 33. In my opinion, a Mormon Democrat who adheres to the present day Democrat platform is one who places his shoes on the wrong feet and tries to walk in society that way, each foot stepping further apart until your doctrine is split up the middle, dissolving into a phantom. Granted, a politician must build a shield for self-defense from his enemies, but many build a sarcophagus and bury themselves and their families from the face of man and God. Negative Letter 34 Regarding your newspaper statements in connection with the Mormon Church versus the Negro, to my thinking, it is about a low a blow you could make regarding our church, myself being an LDS, and the biggest motive I can think of in your making such statements as now is the time to bring the Negro into full fellowship, etc., etc., can only be based on desperate political expediency in bid for votes in the coming election. I further feel that if I were a Democrat, your statements would be a disservice to the party. Should you feel your political needs require the Negro support, then I for one suggest most strongly leave the Mormon church out of it. Negative letter 44. 
priesthood a burden to blacks. Some readers took the unique approach of explaining to Udall just how much of a burden the priesthood was and describing how black men are better off without it. This demonstrates a clear lack of empathy and a paternalistic attitude on the part of these members, but served to assuage their privilege by projecting a sour grapes rationalization onto black members. When you remember how your grandfather and then your father were saddled with the office of bishop and other Mormon priestly offices all their adult lives, I'm surprised that you could humanely wish such burdens on others. This differentiation was all to the Negro's advantage. Negative letter two. The author of this letter then goes on to list what he considers the advantages of not holding the priesthood to be, including more sleep without having to attend meetings, less guilt for Sabbath breaking, less priestly burden of helping and ministering to others, etc. Read the full letter to get the idea. I have the Book of Mormon opened up to Second Nephi. For the laborer in Zion shall labor for Zion, for if they labor for money they shall perish. As you know, being ordained to the priesthood does not mean the receiving of a purple robe and a life of ease. You are still under the commandment, six days shall you labor and do all your work. Would our black brethren be interested in obtaining the priesthood if they knew that? Negative letter 18. As it is now, he, the black man, is better off than you and I as he will go to heaven without working for it. The Lord will not keep a person out of heaven because he cannot hold the priesthood if it is not time for him to hold this office. On the other hand, if a person is permitted to hold this office as you and I, we have to keep the Sabbath day holy, pay an honest tithing, observe the word of wisdom, and go to the temple for ourselves and those that have gone before us and do all the things that a priesthood holder has to do. If we don't, there is only one place for us to go, and that is hell with Satan and his angels. But the Negro only has to be baptized and keep the commandments of God. But all the extra work connected with the priesthood he does not need to do because God does not require it of him. In other words, he is a favored child of God and not one that is deprived of salvation. The Negro cannot be a son of perdition, but you and I can. Why? Because we hold the priesthood of God in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Negative letter 42. Blacks accept the ban. Some members felt that if their black friends understood and accepted the ban, then there was no reason to agitate for a change. As such, Udall's only motive could have been to cause problems for the church. I have served with various Negro people in positions of responsibility within the Mormon church that have accepted the revealed explanation of their present denial of the priesthood. They are also aware of the future eternal opportunities that will be made available to them. What are you doing with your future eternal opportunities? Negative letter 24. If President McKay were to say, the Lord has made it known that all LDS Negroes eligible for the priesthood are to receive it, how many of the vast Negro race would that affect? A comparatively small handful would be included. Those few LDS Negroes are not among those who are making an issue of it. They are happy in being members of Christ's church and are joyfully looking forward to that promised day when they will be given the priesthood. They realize that they have so much more than those who are not members. No, it isn't the LDS Negroes who are making an issue of it. Communistic agitators and a few others who are stirring up the trouble. Negative letter 26. Furthermore, the church does not actively seek Negro members, but do not deny membership to those who seek it. The Negroes in the church understand why they are not permitted to hold the priesthood, and it is only those who know nothing about the church who seem to be raising the fuss, and what a shame it is that you are agitating them. Negative lever 27. We have many well-educated, intelligent Negroes who live and work here, and I have discussed our church and the limitations placed upon the Negro in it. I have been pleasantly surprised at times to find that many of them agree with this limitation. Their belief is that God in His own time will remove this limitation, and that as promised by biblical and modern-day prophecy, they, the Negroes, will have the same opportunities as other men. Negative letter 43. Blacks undeserving of the priesthood. This lamentable argument, unfortunately, is also one which reinforces the doctrine which was used to justify the ban. 
For your information, I can promise you that the Negroes will never be given the rights of the priesthood, except they humble themselves before the Lord in righteousness and obedience. They cannot and will not gain this right or privilege by or through riots, marches, or the pressure of faithless men such as yourself who do not know or understand the eternal nature and significance of this right and calling before the Lord. It would be no blessing to the Negroes to have the priesthood before they are ready and willing to assume the responsibilities and consequences connected with this office in the kingdom of God. To give them the impression that they can gain entrance into this office and calling other than through repentance, humility, and obedience to the Lord is a disservice to them or any other race or person on earth. Negative letter four. Have you hired a Negro in your own home or enterprise? Do you think you have enough common sense to save a few dollars and withdraw one of these poor, ill-favored people from their morass of corruption and spiritual weakness? Negative letter eight. The fact that God has seen fit to create a disability, i.e. the withholding of the priesthood, from certain of his children who were disobedient in the pre-existent life is a condition we cannot alter. The fact that we discipline or deprive certain members of our own family because of disobedient acts doesn't mean that we love them any less. Of course, I know your position conforms with the popular notion that God merely and capriciously mixed up a batch of children, some of whom were white, others black and some yellow, in order to provide interest and variety. I pity those who consider such a concept deserving of belief. Negative letter 14. You also call the doctrine of pre-existence a borrowed superstition and the church authorities have strayed and compromised. If you have a better explanation as to why the Negroes are born so handicapped, you should publish it so all may know. Surely no one envies them in their native land or their color or status. Negative letter 19. I would appreciate an explanation from you as to how the priesthood has become so almighty important to people who never before were even interested in the restored gospel. We must remember that a testimony in baptism must be accomplished before any male member is allowed to even be considered for the priesthood. What are you going to do now to assist in the conversion and baptism of these people so that from the day they will be allowed full fellowship in the restored church? Negative letter 24. Members should know their place. To anyone who grew up in the Mormon culture, it should not be surprising that this section is by far the longest. This thread is woven into almost every letter you'd all received. Members should not question the leaders. Seek not to counsel your God. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Let's let the Lord decide when to reveal a change concerning the priesthood. Negative letter three. Your insistent demands that the LDS church bestow the rights of the priesthood of God on the Negro race are somewhat foolish and vain, as whether or not the Negroes gain this privilege is between them and the Lord, not between you or I. Just because you happen to be in a currently powerful political position in the world does not give you the right or responsibility to dictate what the Lord must do to his children, whether they be Negroes or any other race upon the face of the earth. Negative letter four. I am very much displeased with you as a public servant and as a representative of the LDS Church. Do you think that the Lord has discontinued to give his word and instruction to his prophet and has now spoken to a lay member of the church? Makes me happy to know really where the truth is. I have always been taught to keep my eye on the prophet and not a person who claims because of his government position to be in the know-how concerning church doctrine. Negative letter five. The fact that your parents were Mormons before you were born does not make you an authority on running the affairs of the Church of Jesus Christ. Negative letter six. Have you no civility nor sympathies for our leaders burdened with so many unsolved problems? Or who do you think you are to presume you can force by public declaration on man, David O. McKay, to open up the windows of security on the Negroes? Are you beyond polite personal communication? Negative letter eight. Too many people have the mistaken concept that this is a convention of man and can merely be altered by decision of a committee or council. 
This is not possible when one realizes the nature of our church and its complete dependence on revelations, for which is the only means that the revelation concerning the denial of the priesthood unto the Negro can be changed. It is not for a priesthood holder to contend with the church or the general authorities on matters concerning direct revelation by speculation. It is rather his responsibility and obligation to see that it be promulgated and carried out. It is scriptural doctrine that the Negro will receive the priesthood when the time comes. This time will be revealed by revelation and not due to political or social expediency or any other means. Negative letter 10. You know what happened to Lucifer when he told God how to run affairs? In a God-inspired church, even the highest don't dare tell God our Father how to run the affairs on earth. Don't make a fool of yourself for your worthy ancestor's sake. Negative letter 11. It is the Lord's priesthood, and He has the power to designate to whom it shall be given, and that power of designation has never been given to man. You certainly owe an apology to President David O. McKay. Negative letter 13. The fact that you, Mr. Secretary, and others like you, and the churches of the world, as it were, seek in ignorance to deride and malign the church and its ordained authorities, and persuade, through pressure and innuendo, said church and authorities to a supposed popular position, will do nothing more than cause us to resolve the stronger to sustain truth at all cost. Negative letter 14. A few of the left-wing church members seem to think that this doctrine is man-made. This, fortunately, is not true. This doctrine comes directly from our Father in Heaven, for which I'm grateful. When our Father in Heaven decides the time is right for the prophet to change the doctrine of the church, I'm sure this will be done, but not until. Leave the affairs of the LDS church doctrine to the leaders of the church. Negative letter 16. Why don't you run the interior department and let the general authorities administer the doctrines of the Mormon church? If the Lord wants these doctrines changed, I feel he's capable of sending an angel to the proper authority and giving them instruction. If the Lord felt you are the one to establish his doctrines, why then were you not called to be president of the church instead of Mr. McKay? Negative letter 21. The Lord's purposes will move on. You must realize that the Mormon Church is, in actuality, the Church of Jesus Christ. Evidence, both scientific and spiritual, are testaments to this fact, and any sincere person who would believe this message. You must humble yourself from your high throne and seek the scriptures before seeking doctrinal change through changing social conditions. We are not Catholics, Mr. Udall. When the time comes, the Lord will speak, but not through the Secretary of the Interior or any other branch of government. Negative letter 22. You say the issue of the colored people in the priesthood must be solved. May I ask you a question? Who are you to instruct the Lord's prophet? Further, is it any of your business how the Lord establishes his priesthood on his earth? Negative letter 23. If you know anything about church government, you should know that David O. McKay is the mouthpiece of God. And he does not take such matters in his own hands as it appears that you are going to have him do. This, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is not just another social organization that can change its laws and bylaws to suit the will of its members. Jesus Christ is still at the head of his church, and his will will be carried out by those who have been called to do so. Remember what happened to that one of the children of Israel who tried to steady the Ark of the Covenant after they had all been told not to touch it? Take that as a parable unto yourself, and don't try to tell President McKay what to do. Negative letter 26. Could it be that you have forgotten the church was organized through divine revelation from God and is still guided from him through our prophet David O. McKay? I'm sure no one in Washington, D.C., including yourself, can take it upon themselves to make any changes. Negative letter 27. There is one thing you have forgotten with your background as a Mormon. The Lord spoke to his prophet Brigham Young concerning the law of plural marriage. He and he alone will direct his prophet on earth today, President David O. McKay. Nothing anyone tries to do will change that fact. The people of the world will change their religions to fit their personal desires, birth control, etc. But this isn't from God. 
The world will not understand God's will by this type of demanding. We as Latter-day Saints should not be weak like the world and dare to think that we can demand anything from our prophet. This is a privilege we earned to prepare ourselves for eternal life, and I abhor your tactics. Negative letter 28. You are lacking in that one great principle of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, to wit, to support the general authorities of the Church. I am a convert to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, having come into the Church in August 1957 at the age of 51, and I know better than to make statements past, present, and future that you are supposed to have made. Negative Letter 30 I cannot help but believe you're not so presumptuous as to believe the reasoning of man preempts the wisdom of God who reveals nothing except through his prophets. Negative letter 37. The wording of your letter indicates that you were telling the general authorities what to do instead of voicing your personal opinion in the form of a suggestion. You also completely disregard the fact that this church is run by Jesus Christ by direct revelation. We do not have council meetings to debate and change doctrines. Negative letter 39. The fifth article of faith says, we believe that a man must be called of God. What right and authority have you to teach doctrine which is contrary to the earliest church and try to make it appear as church doctrine? I hope President McKay, who has power and authority, will tell you to mind your own business and not informed, predict, or prophesy regarding the doctrine of the LDS Church. You have authority to tell others when to open and close headgates on big dams, but please don't assume that you have any right nor power to tell the leaders of the LDS Church what they should do. Negative Letter 41 I'd like to ask you how you can get the Lord to come and give a revelation when and what you want. We believe that the LDS Church is led by revelation, and this information has to come from God, and it is His desires, not man's wishes, towards His people. Negative Letter 42 I am well aware of our individual right to our own opinions, and I exercise it frequently. However, this question is not one in which I feel that any member is qualified to judge. I'm sure that you are aware that we should support church authorities in all matters pertaining to our spiritual welfare. I do, and I do not question the wisdom. I think you should too. One thing I would like to make clear, God does not speak to us as individuals or collectively except on matters that pertain only to us as individuals. He has a prophet on the earth and he speaks to him. Negative letter 43. Stop trying to be the prophet. A good Mormon sustains the leaders of his church. Are you a good Mormon? If you've been through the temple, you have stated that you would uphold the leaders of our church. Why do you publicly try to force the prophet to change the church's position? Negative letter 47. Thou shalt not embarrass the church. To many readers, Udall's main sin wasn't the fact that he had asked the questions, but rather the fact that his open letter embarrassed the church, possibly scaring away potential converts. To think that you, as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, could be so helpful as a missionary in your important position, and then you allow such a release in the newspaper makes me ashamed to think that we have such people in our church. Instead of building up the kingdom of God, you're tearing it apart and making it very difficult for the church to move ahead. Negative letter 5. It is misquotation and apparent dissensions such as this which void all good efforts of the missionary program and individual members of the church. Negative letter 10. If apostates like you would keep their mouth shut, there would not be any reproach brought upon the church in the minds of the uninformed or ill-informed public. Negative letter 19. Just what kind of Latter-day Saint are you? You certainly weren't thinking very straight when you made front-page criticism of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints regarding the Negroes not permitted to hold the priesthood of the church. Negative letter 27. Why don't you try to correct this thing instead of putting our church up to ridicule? What you have said won't bother me, but you have done irreparable damage to many who were just ready to come into the church or who were being a little lax. I think you should get down on your knees and ask God's forgiveness for the harm you have done. Maybe he will forgive you. Negative letter 29. 
There are proper channels of authority and discreet methods of doing this which I feel you have grossly violated, and in doing so have caused a great deal of harm to the Church's public image, and have also created dissension, confusion, and dismay among the members of the Church in general. You should have presented your ideas to your bishopric, and then to the stake presidency, and finally to the first presidency. Also, and most important, this should have been done in privacy and in a confidential manner, rather than an open letter to a publication that would eventually reach the general mass media and gain nationwide publicity. Negative letter 39. You are ignorant. Many readers felt that the only way Udall could hold the views that he did was that he really wasn't knowledgeable about true doctrine. They wrote to inform him of that fact. From an article in the New York Times, I learned of a letter you had written to the dialogue stating our church was wrong with withholding the priesthood from the Negroes. If you knew as much about the gospel as you do about the affairs of state, you never would have written such a letter. The priesthood was withheld from the Negroes by God himself for reasons unknown to man. In case you are interested, this information, withholding the priesthood from the Negroes, is found in the Pearl of Great Price as a revelation given to Enoch the prophet at the time. If you are a good Latter-day Saint, some serious thought and study should be worked into your busy schedule so that you will not make remarks of this kind. Negative Letter 6 I just finished reading the Los Angeles Time article, End Mormon Racial Bias, Udall urges. I felt it necessary to express my sympathy to you for your apparent lack of knowledge and testimony of the truthfulness of the gospel. Negative Letter 7 If you had been a lifelong active member of the church, I do not believe that you would have made the irresponsible statements that you have made. I can only assume that in reality you have very little understanding of the teachings of the church. Negative letter 17. I read your article in Dialogue pertaining to the acceptance of the Negro into the priesthood of our church, and it brought to mind the saying, He who knows nothing speaks most about it. Negative letter 37. Get out of the church. If you don't support the racist teachings of the church, then get out. This loving concept was communicated to you all in a number of ways. Of course, if you covet the stewardship presently invested in President David O. McKay, then perhaps you might prefer to lead another dissenting group away from the church, a move similar to that which was led away after the death of Joseph Smith. Negative Letter 7 If you don't fully understand your own religion, why don't you transfer to some other faith? It's obvious you don't understand your own church's teachings. Negative letter 9. If I believed that my church was the last to receive the word of God, I would most assuredly change. Maybe this is the logical thing for you to do. Go with those who conform and adjust their doctrines to the popular notions of so-called majorities. Negative letter 14. If our church is true, that the policy is true, and it is instigated by God, not by man. If I were in your shoes, I would make a public apology to our prophet David O. McKay and Joseph Smith soon. If not, I wouldn't consider myself a member of the church you have apostatized anymore. If you do not do this, I hope the authorities excommunicate you. Negative letter 15. Should you persist in following the line of thought as outlined in the Arizona Republic, supposedly over your name, I suggest that you request that your name be removed from the membership rolls of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Negative Letter 30 Scriptural Defense Many readers took it upon themselves to point out certain scriptures and church historical facts which support the racist teachings about the priesthood ban. It is interesting to note that while the ban has been removed and the folklore has been disavowed, these scriptures remain canon. Members have had to resort to a distorted interpretation of these scriptures in order to avoid their obvious literal meanings. 
For it is prescribed in the scriptures, in the pearl of great price, Abraham chapter 1, verse 27, it says, Now Pharaoh, being of that lineage by which he could not have the right of priesthood. It mentions in verse 2 of the same chapter, And thus from Ham sprang that race which preserved the curse in the land. And this original curse is described in Moses chapter 7, verse 22. And Enoch also beheld the residue of the people which were the sons of Adam, and they were a mixture of all the seeds of Adam, save it was the seed of Cain, for the seed of Cain were black and had not place among them. The curse is further described in verse 36 and 37 of chapter 5 of Moses. Negative letter 10. The teachings of the prophet Joseph Smith were that the Negro cannot hold the priesthood. He had his chance of the pre-existence and he rejected it. Negative letter 13. You call for a resolution of the Negro problem within the church, but not by what you refer to as pious moralistic platitudes. May I ask you to what you are referring? Is the Book of Mormon a pious moralistic platitude? Are the Pearl of Great Price, Doctrine and Covenants, and Bible pious moralistic platitudes? Indeed, is modern revelation a pious moralistic platitude? I cannot understand your statements in light of the following scriptures. Udall, I presume you are quite familiar with the scriptures, both ancient and modern, and therefore there was no need for me to quote scriptures. I know that no doctrinal changes will come through secular pressure. Negative letter 22. I would with disgust your article, Udall prods Mormons to solve Negro issue. You evidently have not studied the scriptures as it pertains to the Negro. Had you studied the scriptures in regards to the Negro, you would not permit the above-mentioned article over your name. I suggest that you read the following before you indulge in any more articles on the Negro question. Mormonism and the Negro by John J. Stewart. I suggest that you study the references given in this book. The Book of Moses, The Pearl of Great Price, Genesis 9, Numbers 25, etc. Negative Letter 30 your letter was an attack. By framing Udall's letter as an attack, readers could then take the role of the victim. This distracts from the issue at hand. It was with regret that I read your attack upon the church in the Deseret News. When a member of the church raises the Negro issue as you have done, you're really telling the world that you do not believe we have a prophet and are guided by God through divine communication. Negative letter 13. I cannot understand your thinking on the Negro issue, and I believe you are damaging yourself, the church, and mankind in general by your statements, which are, to me, completely unrealistic. Negative Letter 22 God Supports Segregation Some people look to the scriptures to see segregation as a divine attribute. This is a common defense of the priesthood ban even today. When the Lord chose the nations to which the spirits were to come, determining that some would be Japanese and some would be Chinese and some Negroes and some Americans, he engaged in active segregation. When he preserved his people Israel and Egypt 400 years, he engaged in active segregation. The Jews were segregated and also the Mormons. Negative letter 13. USA is a polyglot of people of many nations. There would be confusion if both whites and blacks were the priesthood. So in my opinion, in USA, it is reserved to the whites, and they are duty-bound as God's servants to bless the blacks with the priesthood. Negative letter 18. It was God who divided unto the nations their inheritances and set the bounds of the people. It was He who made all nations and determined when and where. Negative letter 19. Judaism teaches only the tribe of Levi, whites, are priests, Kohanim. Gentiles and Negroes cannot hold the priesthood. God said to Israel that Israel would be to him a kingdom of priests. Negroes are impostors pretending to be priests of God. God is a racist. Many people of white race are Israelites. Original, true Israelites are a white race. Israelites were told not to marry with other races of people. The state of Israel law forbids a Jew to marry a non-Jew. Jesus Christ was a racist. Negative letter 20. Although your statements may have caused untold damage or harm to our church, I hope you can discuss this with your bishop. 
Then you will understand this very important truth, that our church doesn't teach the doctrine of men, but of our Father in heaven. Since this is true, the very character of Mormonism can't be distorted or crippled by adherence to what our Heavenly Father has revealed. Negative letter 35. To your way of thinking, a true Latter-day Saint may be a bigot and may not conform to the great stream of modern and social thoughts, but at least true believers know that our prophet's wisdom is far greater than that of others existing on earth today, as we dare not undo revelation that took the struggle of thousands of people, many of whom lost their lives to defend. Negative Letter 40 Special Mention there are a few letters which are difficult to categorize. One includes a comparison with the Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation, which, if taken literally, means that every Catholic is a cannibal. The author then goes on to urge Udall to take a stand against Catholic cannibalism as well. See letter 20. Another remarkable letter is one that was sent in by a primary age child. I am 13 years old, and I am a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I have just read an article in the Honolulu Advertiser which has said that you urge the church to change its attitudes as far as the Negroes go. I firmly believe that the church is divinely inspired as are all of its teachings. If you really consider yourself to be a member of the church, then you would realize that we practice not letting Negroes hold the priesthood because we have been commanded to do so by our Heavenly Father. I must say, I am very disappointed in you. You may or may not realize it, but you have sorely hurt the church. I doubt if this will change your thinking in any. However, I feel that I should tell you that both my mother and I am disappointed in you. Wouldn't you be if the person you voted for wasn't all you thought he was? Negative letter 32. Finally, a member from California wrote and castigated Stuart Udall and all other church members who bear the name Udall in a remarkable fit of linguistic barbs. My husband knew and grew up with all the numerous Udalls and know what they would do for their own skin, for their own point. And now we have one of your family to put up with in our ward, Studio City, Burbank State, California, and he is just your type, and no one loves him. Negative Letter 46 Conclusion Gordon B. Hinckley taught that if you don't stand for something, then you will fall for anything. In 1967, at the time of Udall's letter, every single one of the members who wrote to him were standing for something. They were standing up for the teachings of the scriptures, the modern prophets, and their religion. Mormons asking themselves, who's on the Lord's side who, knew that they stood with God because they were repeating the teachings of the church leaders. They would see Udall's letter as an affront to the church and to the doctrines of God. By attacking Udall, they believed they were taking the Lord's side and defending the truth. Looking back, we see these exchanges in a different light. Udall was standing for truth while the members were standing for error. Udall was on the side of brotherhood while the members who attacked him were on the side of a doctrine of religiously sanctioned hate and white supremacy, things which could not be of the Lord. Like crabs attacking any of their own who try to elevate themselves, church members all around the nation tried to tear down Udall for rising above dogmatic racism. I have no doubt that some people will ask why it is that I would dwell on all of these hateful things written in the letters to Udall. Those are all old backwards notions that are not part of the church today. Is that true? I have spoken with a board member of ordained women and they have received messages from members with the exact same sorts of arguments. I have seen numerous Facebook discussions about dealing with LGBT members that read very similarly. The ban has been lifted, but the culture which prompted these letters has not changed. When ordained women board members are lectured that women are better off without the priesthood or incompatible with those responsibilities, we are reminded that members still value dogma and paternalism over thoughtful questioning and empathy. We see the same threads of the primacy of obedience and deference to church leaders when members who express support for women ordination are assumed to be in apostasy and told that they are in the wrong church and should go start their own. The same closed-minded attitude towards outsiders is revealed when members disregard non-Mormon pleas for inclusive weddings that welcome all family members apart from temple ceilings without a year-long wait.
Underlying all of these cultural attitudes is the unquestioned premise that the leaders who interpret and reveal doctrine are correct simply because they hold positions of authority in the church. The unfortunate result of this premise is that without any critical thought, earnest empathy, or introspection, members feel empowered to tear down people who find a moral footing outside of the orthodox dogma of the church. This lamentable situation creates a membership that is inexperienced in analyzing complex moral issues without the crutch of an appeal to authority. Their answer to the relevant questions invariably can be traced to a church leader who issued a decree which is then believed on the basis of an assumed divine appointment. The practice of starting with a root moral principle and reasoning through an issue on the merit of one's own conscience and without a deference to church authority is a skill that is being left to the Jack Mormons of the world, like Udall in his day. Let's learn from the past. When the dialogue has devolved into echoes of the sentiments we see in the above letters, step back and remember that church leaders have been wrong before. Their error seeped into the hearts of the membership and gave sanction to hate. If we are to avoid the same mistake, we must each find our own conscience and not simply outsource our morality to men who have betrayed that trust in the past.